there behind the camera. <laughs> it's making me laugh. So here we are. Happy Wednesday. And we are going to have a good show for you today. Let me just get you pulled up here. And, uh, Hello. Here. There we go. Here we go. We uh, have a very special show in store for you today because in case you didn't know, yesterday was National Chocolate Chip Cookie Day. See my apron? Cookie Queen. That was a special gift from a special viewer. Um, thanks, Rhonda, baby. So those of you that know, know that I love cookies and they are my thing much more than anything else. Um, cake or cupcakes or anything else. No, 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 no. Give me a cookie any day. Um, and we also had cookie stores in Washington, D.C. For those that um, don't know, we've been in that business. So uh, we have a lot of experience and I have made a lot of cookies. So whenever I see a um, new cookie recipe that I thought sounded interesting and in honor of National Chocolate Chip Cookie Day that was yesterday, I thought, well, let's try a new recipe. So I am going to get started here on a new way for to make chocolate chip cookies that I thought were delicious. Now I've already tested this recipe and I've given it to two different taste testers and we got five stars from both of our testers. So that is a good start. And me too. I thought they were delicious or I wouldn't be making them for you. So I'm going to get started here. And one of the in interesting things with this recipe was um, I am taking three quarters of a cup of oats and I'm going to grind them up in the food process processor. So we're going to have a little bit of noise here on this show. So which my microphone doesn't like, but here we go. Hold on. I'm going to pulse those real quick and grind up the oats to be a little smaller. Hold them all together here. So you can see they're getting they're getting ground up there. Okay, so I've got my oats ground up just a little smaller. I know I need something to mix them in, so hold on a second. I'm going to mix my dry ingredients together. Hey, Susan. Hey, Florence. We are making an ode to the chocolate chip cookie today. So I just ground up three quarters of a cup of, of oats in the food processor. Instagram, I don't know if you can see that, but I've got a, a, a food processor right here. And then the mixer. So in the mixer, I'll start our sugars. So I've got um, 10 tablespoons of butter already in the mixer. And I'm going to add um, three quarters of a cup of packed brown sugar going in. There we go. Oops. Just spilled the chocolate chips. Whoopsie. I have to pick those up because, you know, we can't let one chocolate chip go without being in the cookies. Wouldn't want to let one of those little suckers get away. No, no, no. So what is your favorite kind of cookie? And I made those ones I made uh, early on, those um, sugar cook, uh, cookies with the pretzels. Oh, they were good too. Because whenever I find a good sugar, uh, a sh sugar cookie or any kind of cookie recipe, I'm all in. So here we go, I've got the sugars going in there. I'm going to start turning that on here to get going. So half a cup of white sugar, three quarters of a cup of brown sugar packed. So we're going to get those going in there. Make sure I get everything in here. So while that is going, I'm going to start and mix our dry ingredients here. Oh, peanut butter, yeah. Peanut butter are awesome too. Do you like it with or without the chocolate kiss, Florence? So I'm going to let that go. So my dry, dry ingredients, I'm going to start here. We're going to start with our three quarters of a cup of our oats that I ground up. So they are much finer than regular. And the oats I love, by the way, are my favorite, are these gluten-free from Trader Joe's. Because they just have a lot of, like, they're chewy and they're just big and yummy. They're my very favorite. I am not a steel-cut oats girl. I'm a Trader Joe's gluten-free oat oh, oh. Oh, it's gross. I like them to have some, you know. Oh. <laughs> okay. And to this, I'm going to add um, the three quarters of a cup of all purpose flour going in with our dry. And then I have a cup of cake flour, which was another thing about this recipe that I thought was interesting was it called for two different kinds of flour. So the. Um, Turn that off real quick so you guys can hear me. Um, 
the cake flour and the all-purpose flour, this recipe has both. So the thing about cake flour, it's finer, and if you want a finer crumb, um, that's what you use cake flour for, so you use it for pastries and things like that, whereas bread, you want a heavier crumb, you want it to be denser, so you use all-purpose fl uh, flour. The difference is also in the gluten content. Um, cake flour has the least amount of gluten, and the all-purpose AP um, has the most amount of gluten. So um, all different kinds of flour, um, but there's your little lesson in cake flour, but this recipe calls for both. So I've got them both in there. So I'm going to mix this up. Let me grab a mixing device here, and I'm going to whisk this together, our oats and our two flours, and then I'm going to add here our baking soda and baking powder, calls for both, and some salt. So let me get these going on here. Hey Savannah, how are you? How's everything? Sounds little, I saw your mom posted all those pictures. Looks like you guys had a blast uh, for Grandma and Grandpa's 50th wedding anniversary. So shout out, happy anniversary to the Silers. Not the Silers. Uh, what's Aaron's maiden name? To your grandparents. <laughs> Do you know? I don't know. Uh, let's see. Okay, half a teaspoon of baking soda. So put that in, half a teaspoon. I'm actually me uh, measuring for a change, mostly for you guys. Um, three quarters, let's see, soda, salt, soda, half a teaspoon of soda. Put that into here. Okay. There we go. And then salt. I'm going to put some salt in. Three quarters of a teaspoon going in. I will me me measure that real quick. Hey, Megan. I am making a chocolate chip cookie recipe in ode of the National Chocolate Chip Cookie Day that was yesterday. So we're, make, we're making these. Now Megan knows she was around in the cookie store days. <laughs> she knew us then. Okay, let's see. Powder, soda, salt. Okay, there I got it all in here. Okay, so get that mixed in here. Okay. And I am going to um, put the egg in here. I have an egg. Did it roll away? There it is. Found the egg. <laughs> my egg didn't roll away. Get my egg in. Okay, and we'll get that mixed in here. Okay. Yes. I know. Me Megan, you have an awesome um, peanut butter cookie recipe. I remember when you lived in Chicago, we were visiting you, and you made this yummy. It was like peanut butter and sugar and some mini chocolate chips. Oh, my gosh, it was so good. So you should share that with us. And, Megan, you make all kinds of good things. What's your favorite cookie recipe? Hey, Erin. Like I was telling your daughter, it looks like you had a great time um, at the, on the Scarlet Bell. That looked like a blast. So I want to make sure that my egg is thoroughly mixed in here. Yes, it is. So we've got our egg in there. And then um, I'm going to put our dry ingredients here in. in. But you know what? I think I need a little more, as I'm reading my recipe here off to the side, I need a little bit more of baking powder. It was three quarters. So I'm going to put a little bit more powder in. So make sure they all rise properly. I get sidetracked thick. Th uh, thinking about you guys, talking, thinking. We also talk about the history of the chocolate chip cookie. Ruth Wakefield was the gets credit for the chocolate chip cookie, and she and her husband ran an inn. Guess what it was called? Who's got a guess? What was the inn called? My director, producer, cam cameraman, grip, dancing machine. He's he's got he's got a guess. But do you guys have have a guess? I'll give you guys a second there to respond. The name of the inn that they ran. Oh, I'm going to put the vanilla in. See? It's sidetracked. The vanilla goes in with the egg, but I'm putting it in now. And it calls for a teaspoon, but I, I will put a generous teaspoon because I like vanilla in my cookies. So a little bit of a heaping teaspoon there of vanilla. My favorite vanilla, by the way, I should really get paid for these for my endorsements, but 
the Costco vanilla is the best. So that's going in. Okay, make sure I got everything while I'm talking. Oh, it's time. I'm going to talk Brown sugar. Now, the recipe, when I post this, it um, calls for light brown sugar. I never use light brown sugar. What a waste. Only dark brown. The difference, by the way, do you know the difference? What makes it brown from the audience? Molasses makes the, sh the sugar brown. So it's regular sh uh, sugar with molasses and dark brown just has more. But I personally li uh, like it, so that's what I use. Hey, Jill, how are you? Oh, I should give you a heads up. We have a special guest on the show Saturday. So you're going to want to be here. Special guest on Saturday making some yummy family favorites. Okay, so I've got this all in here. Okay. Now goes the most important thing in a chocolate chip cookie. Do, 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 do. The chocolate chips. And these are by far the best, my favorite. And believe me, I have used them all. And Guitard is the best. Again, another endorsement. Unpaid endorsement. Guitard, they're the best. Um, so they're going in. A cup and a half of chocolate chips go, uh, going in. Oh, yes. And there we go. Our dough ready to go. Now this recipe uh, wants you to um, uh, refrigerate it for 24 to 48 hours before you use it. So I have done that um, already on another batch. So I am ready to um, show you the best way I think to make cookies because I have all the sizes here. I have a tray here. Here's my tray. Parchment paper is your friend. Always use it. I go through a lot of it. I use it for everything. Mostly because I am the cook and the dish doer. So I um, like parchment paper. It makes it go a little faster. So now, the trick to cookies in baking, speed, uniformity, all that. The, the scoops. You can see, you guys probably can't see this, but this scoop is totally mangled from my cookie making. So there's another one, same size, but these, you get these at the restaurant supply store, or I think you get them at Pampered Chef too, but um, I go through them so fast that I buy them, you know, when I find them that are nice and solid, do not buy a chintzy scoop because they don't last. Um, but for this recipe, these are little mini size cookies is what the recipe called for. So the next trick to these, besides the cake flour, is, um, and the ground up oats is I'm going to scoop a couple of these. Now I just took these dough out of the fridge um, so it makes it easier to scoop too. So I'm going to scoop a few of these. I'm using my small scoop and the size on this scoop is, I'll tell you if I find it, um, but they're numbered. Um, but I'll have to find the number size scoop that this is, but I know it's on here somewhere. But it's small. I mean it's like small like a melon baller, the size. It's, because you probably can't tell how big these are, but they're not that big. Like the size of a quarter or so. Um, and make them the same. Make them all the same when you scoop them so that they bake at the same time and they come out the same size, they come out in the same bake time is really what you're trying to achieve here. So we're going to put a few on there and then I'm going to show you. We are going to be using some Malden flaked sea salt. Now this salt is so cool and you know it's been on a lot of recipes lately and you just have sea salt caramel things and you know flaked salt on top of all kinds of savory and sweet dishes and you think it's kind of a new thing you see it on restaurant menus and you see it on things that are served to you. Well guess what? Nothing new is old again or nothing old is new again because Malden Flake sea salt is from 1882. <laughs> you can find this at your, gro at your grocery store. Um, it's usually by the salt, but you see the flakes on this. If I, if I can show you, I don't know if you can see how big these flakes are. Look, they look like dandruff. <laughs> but flaky salt, big flakes. So you just take a few of these big flakes and you put them on the top of these sweet cookies. Oh my gosh, how yummy are these? Oh my gosh. So we're going to put a little bit of sea salt on top of these. And then, yes, Jill, you got it. They ran an inn called the Toll House Inn. It's where you get the Toll House cookie. So Ruth invented the Toll House cookie, which was just a chocolate chip cookie. She had a chocolate bar that she ended up breaking up. This inn was on a road where people traveled by it um, in Massachusetts. 
and so she is credited with the cookie and it beat it got on the back of the chocolate mor mor morsels nestle chocolate morsels um, in 1939 so it has been on the back of that package all these years but it was her ruth that invented the recipe so here we are so these are these little chocolate chip bites and i will show you because i have one that my tasters didn't eat to show you in the oven and we have one you see how cute it is with the little salt on top and it is so cute these little bites so you know in the summers if any of you guys do grew up in southern california in newport beach down by the fun zone they used to have a chocolate chip cookie place down down there when i was little and we would go you know in the summers and we went to the fun zone and they had these wax bags you know and in them they'd pull these warm chocolate chip cookies you know off the trays and you'd buy them by the dozen these little packages by the dozen so this recipe just reminded me of that and i mean who doesn't like a warm chocolate chip cookie and at my house we always have cookie dough in the freezer always 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 i'm always ready with, with a cookie at the drop of a hat so that is our ode to the chocolate chip cookie today with a new twist on the recipe um, with oats, ground oats, and the cake flour, um, and the malt and sea salt on top. So yummy, yummy, yummy. And because we are making something so yummy where you want to lick the bowl, our giveaway today are these really cute cocktail napkins. And they say, you only live once. Lick the spoon. Because, you know, especially in the times we're in now, you really should lick the spoon. What are you waiting for? <laughs> And since most of your grandkids aren't visiting and kids and grandkids, your kids are home, but people with grandkids, you haven't been around them, so go ahead and lick the spoon yourself. <laughs> so I just thought these were so cute. So that's our giveaway today. And if you have commented or liked these videos down below, um, you are in my fish. I have a fish now, isn't he cute? So I have two of these to give away. So I'll put the recipe here and I'll put it here. You can, um, these recipes also go up, these videos on our YouTube channel on Ventura Real Estate. So please go and subscribe because we're almost to a thousand and when we get to a thousand, we can broadcast live on YouTube too. So go on YouTube, Ventura Real Estate, and they'll also put them down, uh, down here. So our first winner of the cocktail napkins today, Mark Johnson, and he is a CEO of a real estate company in Dallas, big uh, company. He's actually going to be in town in a couple weeks. I'm so excited I get to see him. So I will save his gift and give it to him when I see him. But he uh, is a winner here. And our second winner today is da -da -da -da, Lisa Anglin, cocktail napkin winner. She was our special guest a couple of weeks ago. So if you didn't see our episode with Lisa and I, you can go back and, and see it. Um, so we will have a special guest on our show Saturday. We are here Wednesdays and Saturdays live at 3 o'clock. And you would never know that 45 minutes ago I was on the other end of a jackhammer, would you? Because, you know, what have you done today? I've done real estate all mor morning on the phone all day, jackhammer, and then a cooking show. So that's just a normal day. We're going to go back to the jackhammer after the show. <laughs> So thanks for watching. We love seeing you guys here, and I will post this recipe. It's a delicious one, but you need to plan because you need to leave the dough in the fridge overnight, um, and they turn out great. So thanks for watching. Visit us at GaryAndLisa.com. Um, you can visit us on YouTube at Ventura Real Estate, and we will see you Saturday at 3 o'clock. Thanks for watching.